term. I think it really does define exactly what sort of the current trend is in modifying vintage vehicles. And this is a really good example of that. That's a later model LT1 Smartlock Chevy. It's been going over a little bit of a mild cam. It's got a high-tech 4L60 automatic overdrive transmission. It's got four-wheel disc brakes. It's got the two 17-inch wheels. This is really the way it's done. If you want the, uh, the blueprint for kind of a mid-level uh, resto mod, Camaro, or Mustang, or Chevelle, or a Challenger, Cuda, this is what it's all about here. Great color combination. You've got fresh wheels on it. Great looking car. And you know, wasn't that long ago that if somebody had a 69 Z28 or 69 SS Camaro, the thought of modifying it like this would have been heresy. Everybody was already going to make it original. They make it original. The whole resto mod movement has changed the mindset. You know, it's really great. People are using their cars. They're driving them more. It just makes it more drivable. Um, it's, it's a great thing what they're doing with these cars. You know, we should mention also, uh, Bill, you mentioned that uh, Wayne's show chasing classic cars as yeah. this one sells for 36 grand. Wade show is in its fifth year, but you're also the owner of F40 Motorsports, uh, and we've got to take a commercial break, but we'll get back to that in a minute, and talk about your uh, restoration of cars, and kind of pick your brain maybe from time to time about what you like about the rest of mods and the originality of many cars, and what you like to do. We'll uh, talk about that when we come back here from Kissimmee in Central Florida on Velocity in just a moment.